This audiobook of the original America Burning was produced by the Firefighter Podcast Combustible. More details on this project can be found online at www.combustiblethepodcast.com. The audio for this recording is consistent with all copyright rights and permissions associated with America Burning and is not affiliated with or endorsed in any way by the federal government or the U.S. Fire Administration. Chapter 19. Federal Involvement Time and again, this report has made evident the need for federal initiatives to help combat the nation's fire problem, and also for coordination to strengthen programs now scattered among federal agencies. These considerations point to an overriding need, a permanent federal agency specifically concerned with fire. Emphatically, what is not needed is a federal bureaucracy assuming responsibilities that should be retained by state and local jurisdictions. Fire prevention, fire suppression, and public education on fire safety should remain primarily responsibilities of local governments, where familiarity exists with local conditions and the people being served. Communities have already invested heavily in manpower and equipment for fire protection, in recognition that this is a local responsibility. Likewise, regulatory responsibilities for fire prevention and code enforcement should remain at state and local levels. Codes and regulations must respond to changes in the built environment, and past experience illustrates that state and local governments are likely to be more dynamic and responsive to changing needs for different jurisdictions than a single federal regulatory agency. The federal government can help, however, in being a national advocate of fire protection and in providing better training and financial assistance so that state and local governments and private enterprise can more effectively reduce deaths, injuries, and property losses from fire. Paramount among these objectives is to assist local fire services to improve their effectiveness and broaden their responsibilities from primarily fire suppression to a fire loss management orientation designed to prevent fires from happening and reducing their consequences when they occur. The United States Fire Administration, as we have proposed to call the federal instrumentality, would have other important functions as well. To evaluate the nation's fire problem through data collection and analysis, research, and conferences, and to keep the public and all branches and levels of government informed on current matters concerning destructive fire. To analyze and report on programs related to fire in other federal agencies and recommend changes that would strengthen the federal effort. Through the creation of a National Fire Academy, to provide improved training and education for fire service personnel, building designers, code officials, and others. To strengthen public awareness of fire's threat, to provide block grants to state government units for disbursement to local governments. These grants should not be overburdened with federal criteria, but contain simple guidelines for each state fire agency to administer. Parallels to the intergovernmental relations envisioned for the U.S. Fire Administration exist in the field of criminal justice. The Law Enforcement Assistance Administration awards grants for the strengthening of local law enforcement. LEAA gathers crime data keeps criminal records and statistics for use by local law enforcement agencies, lends advice to those agencies, and, through the Local Enforcement Education Program, trains local law enforcement officers. Counterparts are needed in the field of fire protection. Having given considerable thought to the objectives of the U.S. Fire Administration, the Commission has concluded that the administration would be best placed in a federal department that has a primary responsibility for urban affairs, urban planning, local government assistance, and housing as well as knowledge of building requirements. Hence, the Commission recommends that the proposed U.S. Fire Administration be located in the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Under the President's Departmental Reorganization Program, the proposed successor to HUD, which would be known as the Department of Community Development, would also retain the urban affairs responsibilities. Attachment to a cabinet-level department is preferable to an independent commission. There is considerable feeling in the executive branch that the growth of independent commissions ought to be arrested and reversed. Moreover, independent commissions as a rule have a history of early attention to their needs and later consolidation into departments to achieve support from the executive branch. With a cabinet-level spokesman for its programs, the U.S. Fire Administration would, over future years, have a better chance of continuing support. At the same time, the U.S. Fire Administration would suffer inattention if buried many organizational levels down in its sponsoring department. The Fire Technology Division of the Institute for Applied Technology, under the National Bureau of Standards, within the Department of Commerce, is an example of good intentions and inadequate support. To provide effective advocacy of fire prevention and control, 
and firm executive control, responsibility, and accountability, the U.S. Fire Administration ought to be an administrator-headed agency. Figure 19-1 proposes an organizational scheme for the agency. Functions to be provided as discussed in previous chapters. Planning and evaluation. To provide effective management, the organization must have a regular process for evaluating the success of its programs. It is from these evaluations that future priorities in the allocation of resources are derived. General counsel and administrative process. General counsel provides the legal counsel for the agency, while administrative process handles the budget, accounting, and personnel, as well as the technical review of local and state assistance programs. National Fire Academy. The academy, discussed in Chapter 6, has an important function as a conduit of federal assistance to local communities. Its educational programs could have a pronounced effect on fire prevention, fire safety in buildings, and the performance of local fire departments. All segments of the field of fire protection, both public and private, will benefit from the academy, and all should have a part in its development. Research and Development This division sponsors and encourages research in the behavioral, physical sciences, and engineering areas, which have the greatest potential for reducing future fire losses. It works in cooperation with the technically oriented research programs at the National Bureau of Standards and the National Science Foundation, and with private groups. By also ensuring the flow of information among investigators in fire research in both government and private laboratories, the division can hasten progress in research and discourage waste and duplication. A close interface with local, state, and federal programs, the academy, and information functions is essential. Information System Before effective management of a fire loss reduction program can be accomplished, good information is vital. Local and state feedback is essential to program evaluation. The fire database for the nation's fire services and the federal and state governments should reside in the U.S. Fire Administration. This function will provide for a nationwide exchange of information pertaining to fire and life safety and have data collection, storage, retrieval, and dissemination capability. A uniform reporting system should be required for all fire jurisdictions and would provide the first comprehensive fire database in the nation. The Commission recommends that federal assistance and support of state and local fire service programs be limited to those jurisdictions complying with the National Fire Data System reporting requirements. The development of this program could be contracted to a private organization skilled in information systems. The National Bureau of Standards will continue to have a role in data collection to support its research and engineering-based technology. Local and State Model Programs this division will have the primary responsibility for acting as liaison with local and state model programs developed through the academy or the research division. Programs that provide assistance to school fire prevention education, community college fire science, fire service master plan programs, and public media education would fall into this division. Federal assistance is envisioned here in the form of education, information, and program grants. Assistance to public fire education Local master plan development and statewide information systems are examples. A block grant system administered by each state fire agent is anticipated. A state fire agency may be a state fire commission or the office of the state fire marshal. Present federal roles. The federal government is concerned with destructive fire in numerous ways. Research and development activities are scattered among many different agencies. Fire suppression, mostly to protect federal property laws affecting the sale and shipment of hazardous materials, and testing flammability of materials for the purpose of setting standards are examples of federal involvement. Fire Prevention and Control Fire prevention is oriented toward protecting federal buildings and installations. In addition, the Forest Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture maintains fire control capabilities to protect the nation's forests and sponsors educational efforts to reduce forest fires. The Department of Defense is concerned not only with the protection of military equipment and bases, but with the use and control of fire in warfare. The fire activities within some departments are complex and not always easily identified. For example, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration does not have a fire program per se, but undertakes work related to fire problems as part of mission projects at a number of different research centers. The Federal Fire Council was originally established as an interagency advisory group on matters relating to fire safety. It formed a medium for pooling talent from agencies for mutual aid in solving fire problems unique to the federal government. In reality, 
it has operated at a marginal level for several years. The U.S. Fire Administration will assume this responsibility and perform this important function for the agencies. Research In the realm of fire research, the federal government is a dominant force. In Chapter 18, we estimated that the fire-oriented research, development, testing, and evaluation activities in the federal government for fiscal year 1972 amounted to nearly $27 million. Most of the research is oriented to hardware solutions. There is comparatively little work on such behavioral questions as why people ignore fire safety, why they start fires, or how hardware systems could be used more efficiently. Both the National Bureau of Standards and the National Science Foundation, under its Research Applied to National Needs program, have small but significant fundamental research programs in combustion and on test methods. The Forest Service has a major research program in forest fire prevention and control. Data and Information Fire information relating to burns and deaths is collected by the Center for Vital Statistics in the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare and by the Forest Service relating to fire experience in forests and wildlands. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration collects information on work-related fire injuries. The Consumer Product Safety Commission collects information and conducts investigations on fire accidents involving products and flammable fabrics. Lastly, the National Bureau of Standards analyzes data relating to flammable fabrics and also operates a partly automated fire information reference service for use within the federal government. Additionally, NBS is developing a conceptual design for a fire loss data system. Federal efforts in this area have, however, been fragmentary, each division collecting only that information it has use for. No national, uniform, comprehensive data collection and analysis system exists. Advisory Panels Generally, each agency with an extensive research and development program, of which fire research may be a part, has advisory panels composed of experts from outside the government. They advise on the nature and direction of the agency's programs. There also exists the National Research Council's Committee on Fire Research, which is specifically concerned with promoting and coordinating fire research. The U.S. Fire Administration and Existing Programs The Commission does not propose that all federal fire roles transfer to the U.S. Fire Administration. Certainly, the U.S. Forest Service has conducted an excellent fire program and should continue to do so. The Department of Health, Education, and Welfare has an excellent medical research and public education capability. This should be supported and augmented. The research and engineering-based technology programs presently underway at the National Bureau of Standards should continue to provide the base needed for improved fire safety. The research program of the National Science Foundation is making a significant contribution to needed fundamental scientific knowledge and should continue. The Department of Housing and Urban Development should continue to encourage fire safety through the standards it has developed for its housing programs. The proposed U.S. Fire Administration would complement and help coordinate these many activities. It would provide the comprehensive evaluation and guidance necessary to determine areas of greatest need and then mobilize efforts in that direction. It would act as the central point in a program of information exchange that would strengthen all the federal programs having to do with fire. And it would fill the voids, providing federal help where it does not presently exist, such as providing assistance to local fire services. The recommended responsibilities of federal agencies and of the private sector are shown in Table 19-1 on pages 144 and 145. Implementing the U.S. Fire Administration New legislation will be required to create the U.S. Fire Administration. Federal involvement will have to be phased, initially attacking the high-priority problems where there is an agreement on solutions. Establishment of the administration will be a giant first step in the right direction. The programs of the U.S. Fire Administration will also be subject to evolution and changing priorities. It is important, and should be a matter of continuing policy, that vitally affected groups both in and out of government participate in the planning of the agency's programs. That includes fire service organizations, the insurance industry, fire equipment manufacturers, codes and standards organizations, and especially the National Fire Protection Association. For the agency as a whole, this participation can be informal, but for the National Fire Academy, a formal advisory board should be established. The projected costs in Table 19-2 can serve as an indication of minimum operating program needs and as a starting point for discussion. Some of the amounts in the table should be thought of as seed monies, 
that is, funds to aid and encourage state and local governments to improve their programs and to sponsor research and information exchange. The funds in the federal portion are also intended to overcome present barriers to innovation by creating the climate that provides the incentives to private enterprise to turn their attention to neglected needs in fire protection. For example, paid fire departments typically spend less than 1% of their budgets on capital and equipment investments. By encouraging them to spend 2%, the proposed program should enlarge the market for new equipment to the point where industry can afford major investments in improving firefighting equipment. The most important aim of the proposed expenditures is to reduce the nation's tragic losses from fire. The Commission believes that a reduction of 5% a year in deaths, injuries, and property losses is an attainable goal. That rate of reduction cannot be sustained indefinitely and might be expected to level off as losses approach half of what they are today it would take about 14 years to reach that plateau. Bear in mind that the goal is a 5% reduction from the totals of the year preceding, which is a slower attrition than 5% this year, 10% next year, and 15% the year thereafter. In the first year, about 600 lives would be saved. At the end of five years, a cumulative total of 8,300 lives would be saved. At the end of 10 years, a total of 28,000 lives would be saved. During that 10-year period, 119,000 Americans would be spared the trauma of serious burn injury. Of importance from the standpoint of cost-effectiveness is that fact that a 5% reduction in dollar losses due to property destruction, personal earnings losses, and burn treatment costs would be $350 million the first year, which is considerably more than we have projected for the annual costs of a federal program for each of its first five full years.